fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver. Hooray! Old Lem Saunders and his grandson Jimmy were rounding up their stock of horses. Raisers and breeders of horses on a small scale, they had advanced to the point where now, by selling a proportion of their stock, they could pay off the loan that had given them their start. Yes, it was a great day for old Lem and young Jimmy, until just at dusk, a band of horsemen swept down upon them from the neighboring badlands dominated by Devil's Mesa. Oh, there, ho, ho, still boy. Hey, Jimmy, Jimmy! Ho, ho there, ho. I see him, Grandpa. Who do you suppose they are? I'm not supposing, young and I know. That's Ike Farmer's gang. But, but they're coming here. Yeah, sure they are. Where do you suppose they'll be going with all these horses inside? The dirty thieves. Grandpa, give me that rifle. Oh, you don't. Just get yourself killed. But we got to do something, Grandpa. It's too late to do anything now, Jimmy. Just hold steady and watch yourself. Here's Ike himself. Round them up, boys. Round them up and get them started through the hills. Oh, oh, oh. Don't make no move for that rifle, old man. If you do, it'll be my pleasure to knock you down and scalp you. Hey, we're buying your horses. Any objection? Well, I can't stop you, Ike. But someday you'll pay for this. You can't always ride roughshod over law and order like this. It's got to stop sometime. Maybe it'll be soon. Why, who's doing anything against the law? I aim to pay for these horses. <laughs> yeah. And here's something on account. Oh, wait. You crook, you bully. You leave Grandpa alone. I watch you, youngster. You get the same. I wish I'd have had that gun. I'd have shot you. <laughs> got spirit, ain't you, youngster? Well, I like him like that. So maybe I'll let you live a little longer. <laughs> All right, boys, let's get going. Get up, boys. So long, youngster. <laughs> maybe we'll meet again someday. And maybe sooner than you think. Oh, boy, he's easy. Grandpa. You all right, Grandpa? Yes, sir. I'm all right, Jimmy. Just a rap on the side of my head and bruised a little is all. No, I ain't harmed any. Not the way you think, anyway. Well, can you get back to the house, Steve? Need any help? Uh, just help me up. I'll be all right. Well, here, take my arm. Uh, <coughs> yeah, thank you. You're sure you're all right? Yeah, sure I am. Then I'm taking your rifle and following those horse thieves. Uh, Goodbye, Grandpa. Oh, Jimmy, come back here. Come back here, Jimmy. Jimmy. I wouldn't listen. It'll be lucky if he ever gets back. <laughs> Early
Early the next morning, the Lone Ranger and Tonto were making their way through the Badlands when they heard distant shots. You hear that, Tonto? Ah, gunfire. There's more. They're coming from ahead of us. Isn't that right? Maybe hunting. There's no hunting in this country. Well, maybe trouble. We'll find out. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Racing across the jumble of rocks and lava, the Lone Ranger and Tonto presently came within sight of a youthful figure staggering forward afoot. As they drew nearer, the boy dropped to his knees, then slumped forward onto his face. Oh, Silver. Okay, easy, Scout. Easy, Scout. Easy, Scout. Easy, Scout. Easy, He's been shot. Uh, me look. He's only a boy. Who fired those shots? Why is he afoot? Me look for a fellow who fires shots? No, it wouldn't do any good now, Toto. Wait a minute. Well, what matter? I don't see a wound. This boy hasn't been shot. He dropped because he's exhausted. Get a canteen. We'll give him some water. Ah, me do it. With a lone ranger and Toto to attend him, young Jimmy Saunders soon regained consciousness. At first, he thought the masked man was an outlaw. But he soon realized that his life had been saved by men who wanted to be friends. He identified himself, then rode double with the Lone Ranger. Somebody must have seen me following the gang, because the first thing I knew, I was trapped. The gang drew guns on me, took my horse, and made me head back afoot. Did you get with inside of their hideout? No. Yeah, that's too bad. Tom and I have been looking for those horse thieves. We like to find their hideout. Uh, we look long time, not find it. Oh, everybody's looked for it, but nobody's ever going to find it, I reckon. Too well hid. And back there in the Badlands, you couldn't leave a trail even if you wanted to. You haven't explained those shots. Huh? We heard shooting. That's what brought us to you. Oh, Ike Farmer's gang fired just to scare me, to hurry me along. They probably figured they didn't have to kill you. But before you could find your way out, you'd die of hunger and thirst anyway. Yeah. This uh, raid you told me about, and they stole your horses. How does that leave you and your grandfather, Jimmy? Have you more stock to go on with? Nope. They got every cayuse we own. Well, how about money? Can you start again? Well, not unless we can talk Mr. Metcalf into giving us more time on our debt. We've got no cash. Oh? We borrowed from him to get started. And now we've got to pay him back. Well, that's what the roundup was for. We were going to sell some of our stock to get the money. Now we'll have to pay him with what we got saved. And, and after that, we'll be flat bust. You say your grandfather borrowed this money from a man named Metcalf. It wasn't Dave Metcalf, was it? Oh, that's it, Dave Metcalf. He's a big rancher. His ranch runs right into ours. You don't know him, do you? Yes, I do. How and I once did him a favor. Maybe he'll remember and do one for us. Oh, how much farther to your place, Jimmy? Oh, just past this rise. There it is. Oh. And there's Grandpa out front. Hey, Grandpa, here I am. Jimmy! Uh, Jimmy! Jimmy, you come back! Come back, boy. <laughs> and fit as a fiddle. Jimmy, who, who's this mass fella and the Indian? They're not some Ike Farmer's gang, are they? Uh, no, they're the ones that saved me, Grandpa. I'll tell you all about it. Saved you? Well, that makes them all right with me. Lem, do you feel up to a ride? Ride? Me? Well, sure, but where to? What's it for? Saddle your horse and I'll explain as we ride. Otto, you stay here with Jimmy. Ah, me too. During the ride, the Lone Ranger told Lem about his hunt for the horse thieves and the finding of Jimmy. Then later at Metcalf's home, he explained his errand to the rancher. I'm sure Lem here is honest, Dave. I'd appreciate it if you extended his loan. I'll be glad to do it as a favor to you. But I'd have been willing to give Lem more time without you asking me. It's all right, Lem. I'm not hard up. You take all the time you need about that loan. Well, thank you, Dave. This is mighty kind of you. Oh, forget about it. Anyway, I owe you an apology. Huh? Me? An apology to me? Mm-hmm. I'd better make it. Reckon I'll feel better about it. What's this all about, Dave? Well, it's like this. Somebody among us ranchers down here in the valley has been tipping Ike Farmer off as to just when and where to make his raids. If he wasn't, I couldn't have got away with it so long. And, well... And you'd thought that the man might be Lem, huh? No mm -hmm. such thing. Before I'd work with a skunk like him... All right, Lem. Won't be anybody thinking that anymore. Not with you losing all your horses the way that you have. Well, that proves that you wasn't in with him. And like I say, I... I want to apologize for ever thinking it. Well, I never knew anybody suspected me. Well, of course, they wasn't going to say anything to you about it, Lem. No, of course not. 
But there's something else I wanted to talk to you about, Dave. All right. What's that? Ike Farmer and his gang have been getting away with their raids altogether too long. It's high time we set a trap for him. The Lone Ranger went on to explain what he had in mind, and both Dave Metcalf and old Lem Saunders agreed warmly with what he said. Then early the next morning in a part of the Badlands in the vicinity of Devil's Mesa, a horseman rode recklessly over rock and lava. Get up! Get along there, boy! Come on, get up! He descended a dip, cut abruptly between two great rocks that stood as sentinels guarding a narrow entrance, and the next moment was thundering to a halt within the secret camp of the outlaws. Ho, boy, ho, ho! Hi, Hi. What's the matter? I'm in a hurry, Ike! Ike, I got news, I gotta see you! Ike, hold on a minute. What's up, Justy? What are you so lathered about? We, we got a chance to make a real strike. The best one ever, Ike. I just learned about it. Yeah? When and where? Tonight, down in the valley. What? Down in the valley? Well, tell us about it. During the day, in agreement with the Lone Ranger's plan, an immense gather of horses belonging to Dave Metcalf was made. Word was given out that they were to be driven to market, but when night came and the roundup was completed, the men assigned to hold them were apparently few. To one side of the holding grounds, out of the range of the campfires, the Lone Ranger spoke to Dave. Now, you and Lem and Jimmy stay here. Ike makes his raid. He'd expect to find you three out in the open. But he shouldn't be looking for Tonto and me. So we'll take cover in the brush. Right. How many others have you hidden out? Got half the men in the valley under cover. If Ike takes the bait, he's done for. Good enough. Come along, Toto. Time to take cover. Uh, let me come. come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. The Lone Ranger and Toto took cover and waited. Slowly the moon rose. Slowly the fires of the Roundup crew died down. And then carried on the wind from a distance. Oh, horsemen come. Yes. There's something wrong about this, Toto. What matter? It was all very well for Ike to ride in on Lem and Jimmy without trying to take them by surprise. Then they had only an old man and a boy to take care of. But this is different. This is Metcalf's ranch. They know he has a lot of men. Uh, what do you mean? I mean that maybe this isn't Ike's gang. Maybe something's gone wrong. Dave Metcalf, old Lem, and young Jimmy had also heard the approaching horseman. Well, that isn't Ike's gang, Lem. That's a sheriff in the lead. I recognize his horse. I wonder what's happened. Uh, funny they'd ride in on us like this. Something must have happened. You think they got Ward Ike's on his way? And they're coming to help us, Grandpa? I don't know, Jimmy. We'll just have to wait and see. Dave! Dave Metcalf! Over here, Sheriff! This way! Come on, boys! What's up, Sheriff? What's up? James, before this afternoon, who knew about your plan to trap Ike besides you and the masked fellow and the redskin? Why, why, I reckon just Lem here. Uh, that's right, Sheriff. What about it? Which one of you was away from here for a while? Well, I rode over to my place once. Alone? Yeah, sure, but what is that? How about you, Dave? You been alone any time today? Not once, Sheriff. You can prove it? I never been out of the masked fellow's sight or out of the sight of my men. Why? All right. Lem, you're under arrest. What? What? Under arrest? What are you talking about? What for? Ike Farmer knew this was a trap. He couldn't know it unless somebody told him. And you're the only one who had the chance. Now that ain't sure. How do you know Ike found out what we was planning? Because he raided Deke Phillips' place. What? He got every head of stock he owned. Come on, Lem. You're going to jail. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. The sheriff took old Lem Saunders to town and put him in jail, charged with aiding the farmer gang. At this time, the Lone Ranger thought it wiser not to interfere. But that evening, when the lights in the jailhouse had been extinguished... Otto, are you sure this is the window of Lem's house? Uh, me make sure. Good. Let's hope he isn't asleep. Lem, are you in there? Can you hear me? Lem! Uh, who's there? Don't you remember my voice? The mash man. Yes. Has there been any lynch talk? Uh, not yet, there hasn't. And if there was, the sheriff would make short work of it. Maybe he arrested me when he shouldn't, but Sheriff Fleming will see that I get fair treatment. Good. I hope you don't think I double-crossed you. If I did, I wouldn't be here. Todd and I came to tell you not to give up hope. We mean to help you. What are you going to do? The only thing we can do... What's that? Find Ike Farmer's hideout and round up his gang. Once we've done that, he'll talk fast enough. Then we'll know who's really been tipping him off. The Lone Ranger's promise of help gave Lem a strange confidence. Strange because he couldn't understand how the masked man hoped to find Ike Farmer's hideout when so many others had failed. After their talk with Lem, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode away. Meanwhile, Ike Farmer was seated beside a flickering campfire in conversation with two of his followers. You got another job to do, Slim. You and Dusty are going to help me. Yeah? What's that? You're going to help me pick a new personal riding horse. What? <laughs> Why don't Savvy? Yeah, if you'd have been along the day we watched the mass fell on his Indian part pick up that young Saunders kid, you would. You was there, Slim. Yeah. Ever see better horse flesh than them two fellas was riding? Never did, Ike. Hey, Ike. You ain't thinking of what I think you're thinking, are you? Sure I am. You're going to try and grab them horses? Sure. Or not both of them, just one. Which one? Well, Dusty, I'd like to ride that white horse a masked fellow was riding, but... Yeah, I reckon that's out. From what I hear, ain't nobody ever rode him but the masked fella. And ain't nobody ever gonna. So it's that paint I reckon I'll dab my loop on. How? How are you gonna do it? Well, you don't reckon the masked fella and the redskin will leave these parts without making one more try and finding us, do you? I don't suppose so. Well, if they come hunting us, they're going to find us. <laughs> and wish they hadn't. Ike Farmer's guess was right. Accompanied by young Jimmy Saunders, who had begged not to be left behind, the Lone Ranger and Tonto once again rode into the Badlands. What's the matter, mister? You haven't said a word for the last five minutes. Yeah, uh, what? Uh, how was that, Jimmy? Well, him make plans, Jimmy. Yes, I've been trying to think of a plan. Nothing's come to me. See, the whole problem boils down to this. These outlaws know this country. They've left too many false trails. Well, that's a problem that stumped everyone around here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, look up yonder. That's Ike Farmer. Ah, that him all right. Oh, wait, he's trying to say something. Hi there. Now listen to me, mister. Them shots wasn't to hit you. They was just to let you know we're here and you're to stay right where you are. And if we don't... Now you move and see what happens. I got my boys with me. You can't see them, but you're surrounded. What do you want? <laughs> Maybe we aim to kill you. Bad tactics. We might take some of you along with us. I didn't say we was gonna. I just wanted to let you know we could if we was a minder. Of course, it might cost us some. But that ain't what we're after anyway. Then what are you after? <laughs> well, being that we're horse thieves, as the fella says, what would you suppose? They're after our horses. I heard that, youngster. You're wrong. Nobody would want that crow bait you're riding. And that white horse, well, you can keep him too if you mind, dude. It's that red skin paint we're after. Turn them loose and head them this way. You can keep going and save your skin. No. No, you not get scout. Me kill him first. Oh, wait a minute, Toto. We're in a pretty tight spot here. Maybe we can make a deal. You... You give him scout? Oh, I couldn't. He isn't mine to give. That would be up to you. But Kim, Sabi, you... Trust me, don't you, Toto? Uh, but... Then leave this to me. Nothing doing, Ike. We don't like your terms. You mean you're fool enough to make a fight of it? Oh, not necessarily. We will if we have to, of course, but that's up to you. I've got another deal to offer. 
Yeah, what's that? A trade. Your horse for Toto's. What's the idea? You've got to give us a chance to save face, Ike. If we left here with Toto afoot, we'd be left out of the country. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's a good idea. I'd admire to see that. Our terms are still your horse for Toto's. Otherwise, it's a fight. And if you think it's worth risking your life for the sake of a horse, Ike, why, you can start it right now. I'd still be getting the best of the deal even if I did trade. Of course you would. Yeah, wait a second. Let me think this out. Well, I got to have that horse. But I don't aim to fight for a mass, man. It's a deal. Good. Now start your horse down the trail and we'll send Scout up. Hey, Dustin. Ask me. Yeah, bring you my mean, horse over here. You really oh, mean you'd give up to Ike like that? <laughs> it's only a horse trade, Jimmy. And in a horse trade, it's sometimes a man who thinks he's won it that's really lost. The trade was made while Jimmy looked on, puzzled and more disappointed in the masked man than he would have cared to admit. Tonto, too, was puzzled but had learned from experience not to question his companion's judgment. 24 hours went by. Then in town, in the sheriff's office... Hello, Sheriff. What I... Come in here. Hey. Hey. Ah, he's a masked man and the Indian again. What do you fellas want? After your prisoner, Sheriff. Uh, Take his keys, Toto. They're there on the desk. Open Lem's cell. Uh, me get him. Hey, come back here, Injun. Stay away from that door. You leave Lem in there. Oh, me get him. Come on out, Lem. We have a horse outside for you. We're riding. On your hospitality, Sheriff. But I never yet went to jail, but I got cabin fever. Uh, darned if I ain't glad to get out. You'll be back in it again, Lem. And these two with you. Come on, Lem, we're in a hurry. Yeah, so am I. Well, so long, we seen you, Sheriff. Darn right as you will. And so long. Jailbreak! Jailbreak, fellas! Jailbreak. I'm Jailbreak. calling the posse! Oh, boy, There was no suspicion in the sheriff's mind that the Lone Ranger had wanted him to follow and had chosen a way to do it that was faster and more efficient than would have been a long explanation. If he had suspected this, the sheriff might have understood why the masked man and his fleeing companions left so plain a trail. Even when they entered the Badlands, there was scarcely an interval when at least one of the fugitives wasn't in sight. But in the camp of their quarry, no one knew that the law had entered the Badlands. The outlaws had something else to occupy their attention. Ike Farmer had mounted Tonto's horse, Scout, and Scout had turned himself into a fair imitation of an insane catamount. Ike was trying to get Scout accustomed to his new master, but thus far, Ike had only grown more accustomed to leaving the saddle and hitting the dirt. Watch out! Ike's gonna sprout wings again! There he goes! Look at him fly! There you are, Ike. I'll help you up. Gonna try him again, are you? Oh, like phrases I am. Somebody give me a club. If I can't knock sense into that critter's head one way or another, I'll beat it in. I wouldn't if I were you, Ike. Who said that? Who said that? Where are you? How did you get here? You showed me the way, Ike. No, don't move. Get under the sights of my guns. One bad break and it's likely to be your last. Hey, what's that? The sheriff, Ike. See? There they come. Go for your guns, fellas. Fight them. My gun. It was shot out of my hand. I warned you, Ike. You've had your day. Now your day is done. The outlaws were too stunned to put up effective resistance. And presently, with little trouble, the sheriff and his posse rounded them up and started them back for town. Later in the day, again in the sheriff's office. <laughs> yeah, this doggone jail's just about full to bulging. Never seen so many customers in all its life. <laughs> yeah, but seriously, mister, something I want to ask you. Yes? You never told us how you located Ike's hideout after we tried all this time and couldn't. How did you, masked man? <laughs> You'd better let Jimmy here explain it, Sheriff. There was a time when he doubted my sanity. Oh, I think he ought to tell you. Yeah, Jimmy? Hey, you in on this? <laughs> I sure was, Sheriff. The masked fella traded horses with Ike, that's all. 
Ike thought he was getting the best of the bargain. But like the mask fella said at the time, he didn't do so well as he thought he did. How's that? Why, Ike forgot that if a horse ain't led, it'll just naturally drift home. That's all, Sheriff. So after Ike left with Tonto's horse, Tonto got on Ike's and let him go his own way. And the way he went without Tonto guiding him was right back to the hideout. Why, sure. Of course he would. <laughs> and why didn't we ever think of that stunt? You've got a visitor, Sheriff. Oh. Oh, Dave, huh? Oh, Sheriff, one of your deputies come out to my place, said you wanted to see me. I want to know what for. He didn't tell you? No, sir, he wouldn't talk. <laughs> Good. I told him to save it for a surprise, Dave. If you'd known who we got back in them cells there, reckon you wouldn't have come so willing. What? What's that? They're filled with Ike Farmer and his gang, and they've talked. You're the hombre that tipped him off about the masked man's trap. That's a lie. I was never out of his sight that day. Sorry, Dave. We know the truth. You told one of your hands, and he carried the message to Ike. I'm sorry you had to go bad, Dave. You should have known that in the end it never pays. Uh, you'll never get me. Give me that gun. Why, you... Oh, Sheriff. Look out, mister. He's grabbed my gun. Get back or I'll shoot. Oh, no, you won't. No, oh, give me that gun. Oh, that's it. No, 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 don't. Was your idea to play her up? Oh, golly. Yeah, good one. That should hold him. You can throw him in with Ike while he's unconscious. That's what I'll do. <laughs> the two of them can talk over the error of their ways. Adios, Sheriff Jim. Adios. Adios. <laughs> well, Sheriff, where's the masked man going? Where's he going, Sheriff? Why is he in such a hurry? Well, that man's always in a hurry, Jimmy. He's the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.